Hi YouTube. Today we are going to build this self-contained retracting caster unit. Hi YouTube. My name is Steve Bonin. Welcome to Urban DIY, where we are devoted to working in small spaces. Let's get on with it. This can be used to uh, put underneath any cabinet that you build for whatever tool you build. It goes down like this and unlocks. You will do this with your foot. Anyway, it took me four days to shoot this video, so I haven't edited it yet. I reckon it's going to be long, so let's get at it. At this point, I haven't built my uh, panel sled that I use for uh, uh, for squaring up panels. So what I've done is I've used the square and double-sided tape, and um, I've uh, taped the uh, square down to the panel, and I've run it up against the fence to uh, square up the other side of the panel. And I'm dry fitting uh, the sides to the bottom until this happens. So I spend the rest of the take putting it all back together and finally I get it dry fitted. So I've decided to uh, put join this together using pocket holes, and here I am drilling two pocket holes and watching my dog try to uh, sneak away while I, my attention's on the pocket holes. And there I go, chasing the dog. So the pocket holes are all drilled, and I'm using glue and uh, pocket screws to hold the sides together. This video is not sponsored by LePage's Glue, but if somebody at the Henkel company over there in Germany is watching, I wouldn't be uh, above taking uh, any kind of donation. So I have cut the front side into two pieces uh, with a gap in between to enable the lever uh, to pass through the front that is going to make the uh, ca casters um, come down and retract. And I'll show you that in a second. I just wanted to give you guys a, a preview of, of what I'm doing here. I'm going to move the camera back a little bit, I think. Here's the box. Here's the plates to hold the, the casters. The casters will go on like this. This needs to be cut um, to fit. These are... Uh, what you call a three inch caster, or what they call a three inch caster. I have swivels at the front and uh, fixed at the back. So you can see that it's uh, three and three quarter inches exactly. So that is the, uh, the depth of our uh, pivot blocks that we're going to put in here. So it'll be three and three quarter inches plus the three quarter inches for the thickness of, of the material here minus the half an inch that I want the caster to protrude when, when it's extended. So let's see. So I've set it at four inches. 
So all I'm doing here is uh, cutting the caster plates to length. So what I'm doing here is drilling pilot holes in the pivot block and countersinking them. So uh, I'm just going to put them in like this. So I'm going to lay everything out roughly. The back. Uh, so the back ones I'm not too worried about. We can probably do those an inch from the edge because they don't need room to swivel or anything like that. And, um, this is for hinges. It's self-centering. Good. So these ones are going to be a little different because they have to um, they have to clear the side. We're just moving along. We're down to our. We're down to. The, we're coming down to the finish line here. So. Okay. Well, there's no doubt that those are hidden. Absolutely no doubt that they're hidden. I can, uh, in case it's not obvious on the camera, we'll do this. And when they come up, oops. When they come up, they are definitely half an inch below the bottom. Um, so this is going to go on with a bolt. Probably a bolt that I don't have because I never thought I'd get this far. But um, so as we can see We have a lot, ouch, a lot of play here. So let me go look for a bolt and we'll drill a couple holes in here and see where we have to be. So I found some bolts, but I don't think they're, I don't think they're going to work. The, uh, The depth of that board is um, 11 sixteenths, I'm going to say. I guess it's actually metric. I guess it's 18 millimeters. And the depth of this is probably exactly three quarters. Yes, it's exactly three quarters. So it's just 
sixteenth of an inch shy of um, an inch and a half. And so even if I, this these bolts are an, an inch and a half. So I guess we could use a forstner bit on the bottom and maybe countersink the bolt by a, a quarter inch, but I don't really want to do that. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to wait. Um, unfortunately, my wife has the car and uh, my bike is in the shop. So there's no way of getting to the the lumber store even even to get uh, a couple bolts. So we uh, we will continue this later. And looking by the and looking at the sky, it looks like we will continue this later inside. So this is day three of the build, and for whatever reason, the uh, camera decided that it wasn't going to record any sound at all. So I have blocks underneath the uh, the um, caster plates, just holding it up to the position where I want it to be when. Um, the casters are extended and the, the whole system will ride on the casters at this point. So what I was explaining here was the, uh, the motion of the lever. Now I'm taking the blocks out one at a time to uh, try to determine how far the uh, the casters have to retract so that they are not touching the ground at all. And it looks like I've got down to the last block before that happens, so that's about three quarters of an inch. And now I'm explaining that there's not enough travel at the front to make that happen. So the, um, the lever has to be set on a wedge um, to, uh, to facilitate the, uh, the proper travel of the casters from their um, top position to their bottom position. So here I'm demonstrating that it's only the back casters that are protruding beyond the base and that if I move the back casters closer to the center line, um, this would also alleviate this problem. Unfortunately, this will uh, shorten the wheelbase and I feel it would make the whole uh, system less stable when it's up on the casters. So I opted not to do this. Okay, I'm not going to spend very much time on this, but um, you have two triangles. You have ABC, which represents your wedge, and ADE, which is uh, the triangle formed by the lever and uh, the front of your box. So you can determine the height of your wedge at the fat, at the fat end, BC, by um, just taking the, uh, the ratio of the bases, AB and AD, and then multiplying that by the height at the uh, end of your lever, DE. So that's BC equals AB over AD times DE, and you can draw that on a piece of paper and cut it out. If you absolutely have to have the angle, and uh, I guess you, you want to cut it on your uh, miter saw, so we're going to call the uh, the angle theta, and um, the tan of theta is just the opposite over the adjacent, which is uh, DE over AD, so the arctan of um, or the uh, theta is the arctan of uh, the same ratio and you can determine your uh, 
your angle in radians. To convert from radians to degrees, you uh, multiply by 180 over pi. Mine turned out to be about 7.5 degrees. Okay, here I am got cutting the uh, wedge to length. And now I'm just uh, setting the angle at about 7.5 degrees. We're zooming out, showing you that I have the, uh, the board uh, clamped down on the miter saw. And now I'm cutting the angle on the wedge. And now I am going to show you the wedge in all its glory. Okay, now I'm uh, going to test fit the wedge, and I'm just going to put it in there. And I think I've put some double-sided tape, and I'm attaching the lever onto the wedge and giving it a, a quick trial to see if it's going to work. I'm taking that assembly over to the drill press and um, just drawing some pilot holes and then some the the full size holes for the bolts um, now I'm over at the uh, at the box again and I'm drawing the holes for the bolts in the uh, caster plates and now I am fitting the bolts in from underneath and Putting the, the washers and the nuts on, putting it in, testing, oh, some fine adjustments or just tightening, I don't know. But uh, I'm, now I'm testing it and it seems to be working. So I'm explaining here that the uh, the lever is binding between the two front plates. So I'm taking it apart and pulling the uh, caster assembly out of the box and just I'm explaining that um, the cat the, the hinges are loose and therefore I have to do some uh, angled cuts on the front plates so that uh, it doesn't bind so uh, I've done the angled cuts and uh, reinstalled the, the lever and I'm just I, instead of taking it all apart I just did the angle cuts with my uh, Japanese pull saw and it worked just fine. Now I'm putting it all back together and testing the uh, the travel of the lever. And um, oh, I'm telling you here that I'm probably going to put in some blocks to keep the the uh, caster assembly in when you turn the box upside down or right side up. And now I'm just playing with the box because it's fun. And I'm playing with it a lot. And, there it goes down. Welcome back. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a few modifications before we finish off this box. The first thing that I noticed when building this box, and you'll watch this here, is the back comes up before the front. And uh, I, with, I, with a tall machine cabinet on here and then a taller drill press, I'm afraid that when raising up this platform, the drill press will come towards me and it, it, will, uh, it will tip and fall. Anyway, um, I'm going to make some modifications and we're going to put a block in the front of this to hold to hold this down 
anyways let's get on let's get on with it so what i see happening in here is when we lift these wheels are hitting the ground first and that has to do with this distance this distance here it's much less than this distance here so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to equalize these distances The next modification I'm going to do is put these little blocks in. They're just going to hold the casters in when you flip it over. So the moment of truth, see if it stays in when you turn it upside down. And it does. So the next thing we have to do is make some sort of catch that will hold that there while we're moving our tool. So to begin with, I'm just going to mark a line. Okay, let's go see what we have in the scrap bin. So I found this in the scrap bin. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to do a very quick sketch. And you probably didn't see that because my head was in the way. So I'm going to do a, a quick sketch that it needs to go like that, and it needs to go like that, and so. Well, let's uh, see what we can do on the miter saw. Okay, here we go. Push it down and it locks. Kick it with your foot and it comes back down. It needs weight on it to come back up. But anyways, it's working. It's working the way it's supposed to and that is absolutely wonderful. Our next project is to put the uh, to build a cabinet for the drill press and put it on top of this thanks for watching please remember to like and subscribe it really helps out the channel and we'll see you next time check out these other videos